Hey, hey everybody. Check it out. I am going to the king of the hammers, guys. I am entering Hammer Town. Now I know you can't see it on the camera, but it looks like a freaking city. This is like Burning Man of the motorsport industry. Welcome to, welcome race fans. I mean, seriously, look at the freaking city down there. This is ridiculous. This is gonna be awesome, guys. So I'm, I'll be here obviously for Friday and the final big race on Saturday. There's an all spectators line, which we're going in, guys. Let's see if my press pass works. <laughs> this is kind of like Mad Max in the desert. <laughs> Fireworks, everybody's off-roading on the sides. Big machines. Camping everywhere. <laughs> out here. The Mickey Thompsons. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Cool. There are Ernie Racing guys. King of the Hammers. Just the guy arrived on Thursday night. Oh, good morning, everybody. Look at all the people. I mean, let's really zoom in there and look. Look up in the hills there. See all the campers They're all around. Yeah, this is a, a city in the desert, guys. King of the Hammers, it's like Burning Man for the motorsport. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It is Friday, February 2nd, and uh, the next class is lining up here, guys, out of gate three. So we are in the King of the Hammers. It is a windy, sunny morning. Luckily, it's sunny, but it's windy, which sucks. Here I am cruising around. I'll be filming the events today, and let's go check out a lot of vehicles and the Overlander vehicles I'm interested in. See you guys on the flip side. All right, guys, here he is, the ADV Mobile. Exactly what I wanted to come check out. On the Super Singles. On the 550. Custom box shipped over from Europe, Germany. Got the liquid springs going in here. And they're running the Michelins. Of course, there you got your manual diff lock on the Ford F550s. These are probably the 335, 335, 80, 20. And so you can take this wheel apart on the trail, put it back together. Um, just your only tool is gonna be the bolts and keeping it clean. Yeah, here's that logo. Box manufacturer out of Germany. The little portal hole. Little side camera out there as well. And big thick windows. It's all composite. This one will be like this, you know, like uh, two and a half inches thick, composite. Can we go look inside? Yeah. I'm assuming we can, yeah. yeah. 
All right, well, check her out. It's getting all dirty, right? Here's the shower right in the entrance. I like that idea. You got like your little mud room, right? And yeah, I feel so bad getting all dirty, right? Now it's all week. It's just, I know, that's the thing. It's like when you're at the, all the shows, right? Yeah. Whatever the one in, I was just at. But I have a Northern Light. You know, yeah. you know those Kelowna aid ones? They're, of course, it's a thin, stupid little window, right? But um, it's a, I like it how it goes completely hinges and then the rain will stop it as well. Yeah. Yeah, but of course, you know, there's no insulation in my little plastic, and they get scratched. You know, that's the other problem with uh, plastic windows. Yeah. So, not well, bad. the window package in here, this truck right now, is costs roughly about $35,000. For the window, I mean, yeah. you got. This is where the dirt bikers hang out, huh? Yeah. Sorry, let me jump out of here. So, that's actually this regulator here. So I just set my pressure to yeah. whatever I want Okay, so there. you set it down to 40 PSI, and then it'll release them all to 40 PSI, and yep. then you set it up and pr turn the pump on. Yep. And, and then you're just running little plastic lines to each um, one of those little boxes, right? Yeah, and this is actually for our air, these regulators are for our airbag system. But then this is the electrical control that we use for everything that's in the outside of this box. Yeah. Yep. And then you got the rag, tons of lights, all those Bajas or something, huh? Yep. those are LP9s on the top. More light than you need, uh. yeah. Okay guys, we're gonna take a look at the liquid spring suspension here. We're at the all, all the way down section, so I'm gonna bring it up to ride height right now. All right, and it goes on the front first, yeah. Yep. And then the rear. You can hear it going. All right, so that's that's off-road or normal? That's ride height. That's ride height? This is normal ride height. All right, then you're gonna raise it more, I guess, yeah. Look at the ground clearance. Now it's getting some serious, serious ground clearance. Holy, look at the front. Yeah. Now it's massive ground clearance. Yeah. Do you have a tape measure? I don't. I'd be curious what we have. You don't have a tape measure out here. Nobody, huh? All right. Not on display, but it's being used at the show, guys. Um, it's uh, called the Predator 2. Anyways, it's the LTMV um, military, old military chassis, it looks like. Yeah. And then they built a box all around it. They, they, they put some kind of camper box on here. Not sure what kind of box they fit. In. Oh, oh, I see. It, that's why it's curved. It's literally this the camper. It's literally a pull behind trailer that's been thrown on top. And then, uh, not the best departure angle, but uh, interesting nonetheless. On a military chassis from South Dakota. There's the big. And these guys are running different wheels. They're running 22.5 inch wheels um, instead of the 20s. Expedition vehicles. Look at these little tents, guys. Ah, look at this. Here's the Freightliner chassis, guys. We managed to make the off road here. Got satellite internet. It's amazing. Look at this. There's jacked up. Not much ground clearance on that thing. Obviously, it's dropped and raised, but look at that guy leveled out right there. Wow, that, now that guy was on a mission. That's 
so you pick up a car. there with my paddle chair. Park way over there and paddle up. Otherwise, look at all the RVs. Look at them all. guys we got a custom camper Utah plates on a Unimog he's got the dual Hondas going custom he's got the European little plastic windows like in mine what is some kind of mog is this what year is this bad boy he's running the Continentals the 365 80 20s big tire big tire Ah, oh, the old 1300L. That's what it is, of course. Freaking cool. Super cool. Got a spare on the roof. You got his axe and stuff, little locks on them. That's what I should get on the side. It's brilliant. Oh, there's somebody in there. You have a side reese mount on the side. That's smart. You can put your. Um, anvil in there or whatever you need you got a rear fuel thing at the top there I'm not sure what the deal with that is but uh, very cool you guys see he's got it aired down a little bit huh custom 1300 L Unimog what is a stop stop he's got he must have some kind of system here there's a winch a spare tire I'm assuming or a kind of bike rack or something Very cool. Pretty sweet, right? Oh, I love the Unimogs. Yeah, yeah. That's our buddies. Yeah. yeah. Totally built out. Like RV style in the back. Yeah, he, he built it himself? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what's always nice to find. Yeah, I love like the newer ones, too. The 4023 Unimogs or the 5023. Of course, you can't import them. You know, they can't import a new truck. 20 years. Yeah, so then you get, you know, these things are a little underpowered, but you know, um, obviously you can add, you know, increase the turbo manually. But very cool, I love it. There you have it, guys. First Unimog, custom Unimog at the event. My camper's down here somewhere. Just look at all the people, just massive. And the helicopter. There you see, look at this city. Look at that, guys. Look at that city. A city made in the middle of the desert, motorsports. And they're up the hill where the sand is. And here is the northern light, guys. Here I am. Tiny little truck camper <laughs> behind the wheelies. Hopefully my batteries are charged in that sun since the storm hit. And of course I had to pull the generator out because I didn't have any sun yesterday and I drained almost three batteries in two days charging the one wheels. There we go, nicely in the sun. Well, it's time for a latte and I'm going to try to figure out how to get, I'm going to drive over there and see if I can get to that sand mound where I can unload the paddle tire and actually go and not wreck it and go check out the hill somehow. There's sand mound up there. That's where we're heading, guys. We're in low, in through the deep sand here. With all the braking bumps, just cruising up the hill. Oh, we got some whoop de 
do's. Getting closer, guys. Closer to the mound. Closer, you hear the PA. I'm the only truck camper up here, big full size camper. Where are we gonna go? Except for there's one camper over there, but he's just a lightweight guy. All crawled up and four low, just four low, guys. Four low. It's a good test because you know if you get stuck, somebody, somebody, and you're going uphill too, so it's a good, you know, you can test going uphill. But that would explain why he's still pushing so hard with that front watch. He's he's tired tired of it. <laughs> Only camper up here, guys. Look at that. All stock. Only person wanted to make their comfort so close so I can watch the action. I'm going to figure out if there's a better parking spot here. But. Pretty, pretty. I'm almost level too. Look at that. Or break the CD as we go for the day. Exactly. And when you're, and when you are leaving that car, what a parking spot. Look at my neighbors, guys. It has turned. We'll be back shortly live from the lake. Oh. 